All right, hey everyone. I'm Kyle Schmidt from Claremont, Florida, head coach at the Wakeboard Camp. Um, just here to do a little Stoke Meter episode, live chat. Hopefully help you guys out with your riding, um, give you some instructional tips, that sort of thing. So if you have any questions, just go ahead and uh, throw them out there. Um, double up. How do I work on my edge? Um, are you referring to a heel side edge or just edging in general? Uh, double up says I can't seem to get really hard cuts. So uh, it probably has something to do with your body position. Um, your body actually, yeah, toe side, okay, toe side mainly. Um, a lot of people have the tendency to lean in the direction they want to go instead of down the line. And uh, if you crouch down, you actually lose leverage. So what I usually tell people is um, to try to point their belly up towards the sky and look up the line to the boat. And then as you, as you work your way out away from the wakes, try to point your belly up towards the sky, lean down the rope instead of out towards the flats. It's kind of natural instinct to want to lean out towards the flats. So um, it's better, you create better leverage in a taller position with your belly up towards the sky, your hips forward, and uh, if you lean down the rope, you'll just you'll definitely fly out, and your edge will be much better. Phil says, "How did you become an instructor?" Um, I actually played baseball for many years, all the way up into college, and um, I stopped doing that uh, my sophomore years in college or sophomore year in college, and then I found a summer job um, at a resort. And they kind of threw me in the boat to pull people, and I didn't know how to coach, so I kind of had to figure out my own way to coach. So I think that's uh, a big part of kind of how I developed as a coach. I had to usually figure out techniques and drills and stuff like that on my own. So my um, my good friend uh, Travis Wolf back in the day, he he was pretty uh, into wakeboard, and he also needed a driver, and I I was that guy, so. Uh, he was a big part of how I got into the sport. Um, I was always driving him, so it gave me the opportunity to ride. Uh, Phil says, do you ride yourself a lot, or are you mainly teaching most of the time? I used to ride a lot. Um, as I get older, I ride less. Um, uh, these days, I'm teaching a lot um, at the camp. Um, doing uh, My partner, Mike, as you can see in the background, we started a website called learnwake.com. Um, that's going really well. We're trying to help people uh, online with instructional uh, content, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I'm writing less and less, trying to you know get more into the business side. So, um, Biona, I want to get down to a simple back roll, or I want to get down a simple back roll, but I'm landing on my back. Can't seem to get it. any tips. Um, sounds like you aren't uh, getting the load and release. Uh, kind of bungee effect enough. Um, if you're landing on your back, it means you're not rotating enough, so you're probably not loading the line enough. Um, what I would suggest is uh, try to get a taller position, and then as you build your edge towards the wake, you know, try to, try to lay back into the edge as you, you know, get towards the trough, but then as you ride through the wake, you have to release that edge and let the nose of the board you know, go away from the boat, but you have to do that in a very, very tall position. Um, if you're not tall, um, you're not going to get enough height and you're not going to be able to finish that rotation. Um, a lot of people don't realize that there's two types of back rolls too. There's the progressive back roll and the Mexican back roll, so um, it depends on which one you're trying also. Uh, double up, he asks, any tips on riding switch? Um, my biggest thing with teaching people how to ride switch is I think it's not really um, the fact that they don't know how to ride switch is that they're not comfortable riding switch. So what I do is I spend a lot of time building their tolerance for speed. Um, and you, you can do this by just doing turns and edging out on slight whips, like kind of getting as much speed as you can handle um, and, tr and almost scaring yourself a little bit. Um, and if you do that over and over again, pretty soon you'll get comfortable with that speed and then you'll find yourself moving around the back of the boat a lot faster. It's more of building your comfort rather than actually, you know, 
building technique, I would say. Um, Phil says, when approaching the wake for a jump, do you release your cut at the wake or keep it going? Um, well, it's called, or I think you're referring to the back roll again. Um, but are you talking about on a wake jump or just on, on the back roll? Just want to clarify that. Wow, Phil's got some questions flying in here. Um, back to the when approaching the wake for, oh, when, sorry about that. When approaching the wake for a jump, do you release your cut? No, you want to hold that all the way through. Um, you want to build your edge, hold it all the way through the top, and what I tell people is while you're in the air, you actually have to anticipate your next edge as well. So um, a lot of people, a lot of riders, they jump the wake, and then right when they land, they want to stop. And what that does is it helps your body come forward instead of stay back against the rope. So when you leave the wake, you got to think edge through the top, and then in the air, you got to fall back with your shoulders and continue that edge out towards the flats again. Um, that's that's one of the biggest things with landing uh, stable and in control is you know keeping that keeping that direction. Um, Karch, what is the best tricks for a beginner to start with? Um, at the wakeboard camp, we spend a lot of time teaching people uh, surface versions of the wake to wake tricks. So, for instance, if someone wants to, if their goal trick is a heel side front side 360. We'll spend a lot of time breaking that trick down on the surface um, into parts. And the reason why we do that is because it, on the surface, you, you go through the same exact positions, technique, all that stuff at a slower speed. And it allows you to do repetition, which builds muscle memory. And uh, that's a big thing. So um, we can work on body position and help you memorize the rotation. And that way, when you try it either one wake or two wake, you have a lot more success. Um, so what I would do is figure out what your goal trick is, break that down into the pieces, and then work on those pieces separately on the surface at slower speeds. Um, Phil says, what do you recommend for rope length? Um, I suggest that people use multiple rope lengths to learn. Um, I call them learning lengths and uh, free riding lengths. So um, what we do is we use longer ropes uh, to kind of you know, teach tricks one wake. Um, so say an 85 foot rope uh, to do a one wake 360 or a one wake 180. And then from there, we once you accomplish that, get it down consistent, then we shorten up a ton. So maybe even like 45 to 50 feet. And we get comfortable um, clearing wake to wake, which is a really narrow wake at about 45 to 50 feet. And then from there, you go to your free riding length that that might be 70 feet or 75 feet. It's kind of in between your learning lengths. Um, S tag, what boat do you have and why? I have a Moomba um, LSV, Mobius LSV. Um, one thing I like about Moomba is they represent the um, entry level price point, you know, part of the market. They help uh, people get into our sport easier because they're kind of you know, they keep their prices down. They're not the high end. You know, Supers are their high end line. Moombas are, you know, they're not, I wouldn't call them low end, but they're the price point entry level brand. So um, I, I always believe that um, the boating industry controls the entire industry. So like if you sell more boats, you sell more equipment. Um, so if the prices of boats keep going up, it's gonna, it's gonna hold our industry back from growing and people, it's gonna be harder for people to enter the sport. So. Um, that's what Moomba represents, and that's why I like riding for them. Um, double up. What do you think of wake surfing? My biggest thing with wake surfing is um, teaching the safety aspect of it. Uh, there's a big misconception um, about teak surfing, body surfing, and wake surfing. Um, another strong uh, issue that I always try to push is uh, what what types of ropes to use? A lot of people use their really thin Spectra wakeboard ropes uh, to wake surf, and I don't recommend that at all because it's very very dangerous. Um, you should use a wake surf specific rope, and if you don't have one of those, use a really thick anchor line and just tie knots in it. Anything but your wakeboard rope. It's super dangerous. Uh, there's I've seen a lot of instances in the industry of people you know getting some really bad rope burn or even losing some fingers from using. Um, your normal wakeboard line. Make sure you use a wake surf rope. Bayona, 
How would you recommend someone who is interested in becoming an instructor to get there? Um, at the wakeboard camp, we have a lot of people um, come to the camp for a week as just a normal student. And then um, we see potential in their riding and they take an interest in, you know, the instruction. And uh, eventually, you know, they, they stay in touch and they become instructors. Or um, I, would, I would just try to find a place um, that needs help and, and kind of work your way in. That's kind of how I did at the wakeboard camp in, uh, back in 97. Um, PJ Mark started in 96 and um, he needed help doing odd jobs. And that's how I started at the camp. And next thing you know, I was in the boat coaching and here I am today. So um, you just got to find a place and work your way in. STAG, do you instruct full time? Uh, I would say yes. My, my job is not so much pro riding anymore, but uh, professional coaching for sure. Um, between the wakeboard camp, uh, learnwake.com, the book dvd.com, that keeps me really, really busy uh, traveling around doing clinics. Um, yeah, I would say I'm a, I'm a full time coach. Double up, what invert do you recommend to start with? Uh, it depends on the person. I would say either a tantrum or a heel side back roll, depending on how your edge is. Um, if you do wake jumps with a really flat edge, I would recommend a tantrum. If you have a really nice progressive edging wake jump, then I would say back roll. But nowadays, I find myself teaching people one-handed toe side back rolls. Uh, because it's a really easy um, flipping motion. You can just hold on with one hand, you can slow down the boat on a long line and do it one wake, and you just edge in with one hand, throw your hips forward and your head back and, and do a one wake toe side back roll. So um, that invert's actually getting more popular as well. Uh, what kind of ballast do you use? Uh, it depends on the boat. Uh, in, my, in my Mumbai, I use, um, they come stock with uh, fly high bags. Um, so I put uh, 750s in the back, a 750 in the middle, and um, I add some extra weight up front as well. So, uh, double up. What are your feelings on comp vests? I'm not a big uh, fan of of the whole comp vest uh, area. Let's call it. I recommend that people wear CGA vests or Coast Guard approved vests. I think comp vests are exactly what they're called. They're for competitions. Um, the thing about comp vests, they just don't float you. If the air, you know, if you let the air out of your lungs, you'll sink. Um, so I recommend that uh, people wear CGA vests. There's a lot of pros actually, kind of getting behind that whole movement, um, wearing uh, Coast Guard approved vests, um, because a lot of people look up to the pros and, you know, they do what they do. So um, tell us more about your camp. Um, the wakeboard camp is in Claremont, Florida. Um, I, I would say we're the biggest wakeboard camp in the world. We've been around since 96. And uh, I would say, I would proudly say that we have the best program on earth. Um, we have such a great group of instructors. Um, Chad Lowe, Kurt Robertson, um, man, you name it, Case and Ciderhound, Robert Sitchell, Billy Park. Um, we all collaborate together. We all come up with drills together. Um, we have instructional meetings to make sure we're always improving our program, and um, I mean, we just have we just have a great instructional program. Uh, S tag, what is the hardest part of your job? Uh, I would say you know long hours in the boat, you know being being trapped in a little box out in the water for long periods of time. But I mean, that's just you know a little thing. It doesn't really bother. I don't. It doesn't really get to me that much. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty pumped on my lifestyle. No complaints. Uh, on my inverts, I tend to go over forward when I try to keep my edge into the wake. Uh, what, what invert are you referring to? Because that, that really depends on the invert. That's a, kind of a broad question. Um, I'll answer Phil's question. Uh, oh, back roll. Cards back roll. Uh, you go out the front, so that, that means you're just um, releasing your edge too soon. Um, you're bringing your head forward towards the boat instead of keeping your shoulders back and turning your chest up towards the sky. Um, you have to hold your edge through the top of the wake, keep your hips in front of you, 
and um, just look up and back over your front shoulder. It's more like this position, not this position. So if, you're, if your head and your shoulders come towards the boat, that's going to make you do more of a, a Mexican style back roll, um, kind of like a front rolling motion. Um, a back roll, a, a, a good progressive back roll, you have to stay back and then you throw your hips into it and your shoulder and your head and your chin up towards the sky. Got to keep your hips in front of you. Um, Phil, uh, tell us what your typical day is like or what a typical day is like for you. Oh, well I wake up, um, I go to the camp in the morning, uh, I coach uh, half day in the morning with the campers. Um, come back in, eat some lunch, and then I head over to the offices of LearnWake.com, as you can see behind me. Um, and I spend the rest of my day here doing updates on LearnWake.com, um, either answering bulletin board questions, um, analyzing our members' videos. They're able to upload videos, and I can analyze, you know, tell them what they're doing wrong in our bulletin board. Either that or um, Mike and I are are editing videos um, so we can add more instructional videos to the uh, to the video page and um, either that or I'm on the computer typing out library pages so pretty much my whole day is filled with uh, wakeboard instruction. Um, how did you guys get started in the business? Uh, the wakeboard business or just the instructional business? Um, wakeboard business I kinda just you know started into it uh, through through the resort. Um, it was a summer job and then I worked my way up into the wakeboard camp and then just kind of stayed there and wakeboarding or wakeboard coaching has always been my means to to ride. I never had a boat growing up. Um, I got my first boat from Moomba um, three years ago so if, if I wasn't coaching I wouldn't be wakeboarding so uh, I always had to coach to keep riding, so I have a lot to thank. Uh, I have I have to thank the wakeboard camp for a lot of that. Um, hey, my buddy uh, Billy Park is on. Nice. Um, Tino, were you at Bro Stock? No, I was not. I was at the camp coaching. How did you get hooked up with Stoke Meter? This is a cool format. I think Amber Wing recommended me. Um, Amber Wing probably did an episode and talked to Maurice, and I think Maurice, uh, uh, I think, yeah, I think Amber was the source. And then Maurice called me and I said, heck yeah, let's do an episode, so. Kaysen. Thanks, Kaysen. Kaysen says, hey, cutie pie, I appreciate that. Bayona, do you work with the pros? Yes, I work with um, Amber Wing at the camp, I work with Haley Smith. Uh, ben Greenwood, um, mostly the mostly a lot of our professional coaches are professional riders who are professional coaches as well. So mostly people from the camp. I've worked with um, other pros in the past um, as well. So, um, Karch, are you guys sponsored by anybody? Um, are you talking about Learn Wake or just me in general or the Wakeboard Camp? <laughs> If you're talking about the Wakeboard Camp, the Wakeboard Camp is sponsored by Malibu Boats, uh, Monster Energy Drink, Straight Line Ropes and Handles, and Liquid Force is our major equipment sponsor. They really hook us up. Um, we have the full 2009 line of equipment at the Wakeboard Camp for all the campers to demo. Um, we're talking boots, bindings, uh, wake surfboards, uh, you name it, wake skates, everything. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, Mo. Mo is riding with Ben right now. Uh, I actually got a call from Mo, and uh, Ben was out there. Uh, Bayona asks, "Can you give us an idea of rates?" Uh, it's about fifteen seventy-five for a week, and that includes, you know, your food, your lodging, and your lessons. And basically, you come in, you come in on, yeah, you come in on a Sunday, uh, you ride Monday through Friday, and you leave on a Saturday. Uh, the, it, we actually have uh, Mike actually built the Wakeboard Camp website, and he built a really cool rate calculator on the registration page. So if you go to wakeboardcamp.com, um, you can actually figure out your price uh, just by typing in some dates and some other uh, different uh, constraints. So, um, Phil, what, what mistake do you see the most with pro riders? 
Um, I would say that has to do with um, kind of how they do, how they set up their competition passes. Sometimes I think during a competition run, uh, pros might put in a trick. Uh, they might put a trick in the wrong spot. Um, they could probably make their tricks uh, or their passes flow better or build up, um, start more intense and work their way down to more technical, um, just make it flow better. Um, but as far as just general free riding, I think a lot, a lot of the pros might um, not go back to basics as much as they, they should. Um, and it, I, I know it's hard to go back to basics, but uh, a lot of times you have to. It's, it's kind of inevitable um, to get to your goal. So, <coughs> excuse me. Are you able to attend any events? Yeah. Um, I'll probably be at Worlds. Worlds is in Orlando. That one's close. Um, this year I haven't traveled that much, but in the past I've been, you know, to Worlds, to Nationals, um, to a lot, of, a lot of the Pro Tour stops. Uh, so yeah, I travel a lot, do clinics. Sometimes I do clinics on either side of an event. So if, um, if you know, Worlds is in town, or if I travel out to Worlds, I do a clinic before, or, and then sometimes after, so. Do you help people um, put comp sequences together? Oh yeah, for sure. So if someone wants to, um, want some advice on, you know, how they should lay out a pass, um, I'll go over the tricks with them and kind of, you know, help them lay it out the best way. Uh, they can, you know, smoothly go through the pass, uh, depending on which, what list of tricks they have. So, we do all that stuff on Learn Link too. So, if you have a question about, you know, how to set up a pass, you can always uh, post a question in the bulletin board with your list of tricks, and you know, ask how they should be organized, and uh, we'll help you through that. Kason, <laughs> so if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Um. I would probably like some uh, foresight, you know, like be able to see the future, if that's a superpower. Um, hmm. Where do you see the future of wakeboarded head wakeboarding headed? <coughs> I think um, I think we're going to see a lot more kind of urban style wakeboarding, like cable parks, uh, winching. The new system too is getting a lot more popular. I think people are looking for a cheaper way to get into the sport. Um, because I mean, snowboarding, skateboarding, surfing—you're, um, you know, you're—you don't require, you know, the expensive boat. So I think I think that's a big, a big step for us is to to figure out a way where anybody can just buy a setup and, and go ride really easy. And I think uh, the the new portable cables are going to be a, a big help for that. So um, let's see. Hey Shelby, Shelby Cantar, our professional rider. What's going on? Just to uh, recap, um, I'm Kyle Schmidt, uh, head coach at the Wakeboard Camp. Uh, just doing a little Stoke Meter episode. Tina, what do you think of the new boards? Uh, new boards meaning uh, just the 2009 kind of run of boards, or are you talking about the new construction that's out there, like the flex technology and stuff like that? Um, I, I'll just go ahead and answer what I, th what I think you mean. <laughs> yeah, the new construction, flex. Um, I think I think the flex is uh, is good depending on the person. It's all kind of personal preference. Um, I think they're really good for hitting rails and riding at the park. I think they're a lot more durable durable for park riding. I think out on the on the wake, uh, they have some really good characteristics. Um, a lot of people say you know the landings are a lot softer. Uh, you get a lot more snap on ollies. Um, I think it's all personal preference, though. A lot of people still like the, uh, you know, the stiff board feel, because, you know, one thing that we used to, um, we used to always hate is when our, our board got soft. Um, we always wanted to, as soon as our board got soft, we, we had to trade it in and get a new fresh stick. So, um, it, it all really depends on, on the person. Um, I'm actually involved with uh, humanoid wakeboards. We're getting ready to release a. Um, a line of wakeboards in uh, late July, early August, and we're actually doing a, f a flex version and an anti-flex version, just so people can kind of choose. It's the same exact model, but um, you can choose uh, different flex characteristics, so that should be pretty cool. Um, let's see, next question. Phil's open or closed toe binding? 
What's the big difference? Um, <coughs> excuse me. I would say there's a couple things. Um, first one, with closed toe bindings, uh, the closed toe holds your toes down. So some people think they're more responsive because with open toe bindings, if you lift your toes, the binding doesn't really, or the board doesn't really move until you, you know, get all the way up. So a lot of people think closed toe bindings are a lot more sensitive. Um, the board's a lot more sensitive to your movement, uh, more responsive. I believe in that. I ride closed toe bindings now. Um, another thing in cold water, I mean, closed toe bindings, they got to keep your feet, your toes warm. Um, I think it's, I think everything's kind of heading that, in that direction. Um, open toe are great for people that have wider feet. Um, they tend to spread out a little bit better. Um, but yeah, it's all definitely preference. I like closed toe bindings. Who are your favorite peeps in the industry? Um, oh man, I got a lot of friends. I would say uh, my buddy Mike McClinn, my partner, he's, he's probably number one on my A-list. Uh, ben Greenwood, um, him and I have been, been buddies for a long time. Everybody at the Wakeboard Camp, um, everybody at Wakeboard Magazine, I've done Wakeboard Magazine instruction for a long time and those guys have done a lot, a lot of stuff for me. So I got to thank a lot of people. Uh, man, there's a lot of people. Joel. Joel Hilliard, Humanoid. Um, everybody at, at Moomba, man. There's a lot of I got a lot of friends, so um, I think OKC Wakeboarder, I think that's my buddy Steve. What's the best way to pr help prevent knee injuries? Um, uh, know your limits. Uh, make sure you're in shape. Or or make sure your stance is set up properly. Um, make sure you're flexible. Um, the wider stances are really popular in the sport, and they're popular because a lot of the pros ride wide, but I think a lot of them are, are kind of working their way slowly back in a little bit just because um, knee injuries are becoming more and more common. So um, the, I'd say the best way to prevent knee injuries is probably to do like plyometric exercises, uh, which build you know quickness, agility, strength in your lower body, but also stay super flexible in your lower body. It's not necessarily about strength, it's about you know quickness and um, flexibility. Um, how does water temperature affect the wake? Uh, I don't necessarily think it affects the wake. It definitely affects landings. You know, um, harder water, probably a little bit more dense, so it's probably going to hurt more when you land or you're going to feel more impact when you hit the water. So I don't, I don't necessarily think it affects the wake too much, I don't, or you won't notice it affecting the wake too much, but um, you know, like colder water anyway. But warmer water is definitely a lot softer to land in, um, but as far as you know, the size of the wake, I'm not sure if there's much difference or not. Uh, let's see, any tips on board setup? Um, as far as uh, bindings and stuff like that, um, it really depends on the person and how their legs are you know, built. Uh, a bow-legged person uh, probably should have a little wider stance, um, probably should be a little less ducked than someone who is knock-kneed. Um, like if you can touch your knees really easy, uh, you probably should have more, more of a ducked out stance and probably a little bit more of a narrow stance. If you're knock kneed, then you can get away with a little bit more of a wider stance, but your feet have to stay a little bit straighter, just so you can roll your knees inward. Um, let's see. Let's go back up here. Kyle, to bring back what you said about the future of the sport, I agree with you. Let's, okay. Nice, case. Um, let's see. Rachel Wilson. Hello, Rachel. How's it going? Uh, let me see. Looking for another question. All right. I'm 6'1". I weigh 135 pounds. What size would you recommend? Uh, because of your height, not necessarily your weight, uh, your height puts you on something like a 140 or bigger. Um, it's not just weight. Like a lot of the manufacturers put weight in respect to board size on their um, on all their stat sheets, on the board stickers and stuff like that. Um, but you have to look at the height because if you're 135 pounds, uh, you're really light, but 
you're super tall, so if you ride a 132, you'll be able to tip over really easy. So I would say 140 um, or up, just because of your height. Um, let's see. What is your board and binding setup? I actually ride a 143 because of my height. I'm about six foot tall and about 195 pounds. Um, so I ride a 143, 144, somewhere around there, but no shorter than like a 141, 140. Um, and I ride uh, one hole in, and I ride about probably nine to 10 degrees ducked out. Just a, a pretty standard stance, actually. Um, let's see. Who does the Photoshop AE graphics for your instructional videos? Um, the genius, Mike McClinn, right there. He's the, uh, he's the man with the skills. So he cranks out all the, all the cool stuff. Tarks, I'm, one, I'm 6'5", 195. What board size would you recommend? Um, 143 or bigger, probably. Uh, probably, since you're 6'5", probably the biggest board you could possibly find, like a 145, 146. Um, just because of your height, not necessarily your weight. Uh, Rachel Wilson. Oh, Rachel and Jeff, yeah. I was wondering if that was the same Rachel from... Rachel and Jeff are uh, long-time return campers at the wakeboard camp. Thanks for uh, watching the show. What female board do you like? Oh, man, we put a lot of riders, um, a lot of students at the camp on uh, the Amber Wing Pro model. Um, it's actually been uh, Greenwood shape uh, with um, set up for a girl with, you know, girl graphics and I think a little bit of a lighter core um, just because, you know, women are lighter than, than men generally. Um, but that, that board, it, it just, it works really good for, for women riders. Um, it's not too aggressive, um, not too loose. It's just kind of a perfect mix of everything. But we, we put most of the ladies that come to the camp on that board. I'm not sure if it's because of the board or because they all like Amber Wing. Um, Amber Wing's pretty popular, so. Um, is there any advantage to setting your board up closer to your keel side or toe side? Um, well, if you, if you favor your toe side or favor your heel side, um, the opposite edge is gonna be, is kinda kinda lack. Um, so like if you set up way back on your heels, when you try to edge toe side, it's gonna be a little harder. Um, you're not going to be able to build as hard of an edge, I don't think. Um, and when you try to push off your toes on, say, like a toe side jump, um, it's going to compress you a lot easier because that edge is going to have a lot more leverage on your ankles and stuff like that. It's better to stay centered um, so you have a happy medium. Um, Karch, what camera do you recommend for filming? Oh, boy. Um, we use a Panasonic. Um, what is it? HDC? H. Huh? What is it? HVX200. 200? Yeah. We use a Panasonic HVX200. Um, it's the P2 card version. It's, um, it it, it uh, films in, uh, you know, 60, 60p, so, uh, but, I don't know, there's a lot of good cameras out there. You kind of have to do the research. If you're, if you're wanting to make, you know, like, really good films, then you definitely have to do the research and get something that, um, that shoots HD these days. But just for, um, there's a lot of good cameras just for making your own little videos and stuff like that. So that's, a, that's kind of a hard one to answer. I would, I would say do, do your research. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what is the up and coming trick the pros are working on? Uh, lately I've seen a really big um, kind of push with the, the wrap spins. Um, this morning I saw a video of Aaron Rathy doing a wrapped backside, um, heel side backside 900, which is uh, pretty crazy. And he did it wake to wake, he didn't do it off the double up. So um, like Ben Greenwood's been doing, you know, wrapped, like grab wrap versions. And I think, I think wrap spins are, are kind of making a little push right now. But um, as far as everything else, uh, you know, everything's just trying to, everybody's just trying to push the limits of how, you know, how far they can spin, but also, you know, keeping the style in there as well. Um, let's see. Um, any wakeboard filming tips, such as how to keep it still? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say there's, a, you know, a lot of people try to get stable by putting their, their elbows 
you know, on their body or on the boat or um, just supporting themselves. But uh, you tend to get a lot of vibration from that. You're better just to, you know, to hold the camera kind of like this with your elbows, you know, underneath you and just, you know, try to be as smooth back and forth as possible. Um, you definitely don't want to touch anything because you're going to feel the bumps from the water. Um, you know, just Mike and I, when we film from the rider boat, we, we kneel against the back seat and we try to hold, you know, the camera as still as possible and absorb all the shock as possible. So, as much of the shock as possible. Um, but yeah, don't, don't rest your arms or anything on, on the boat or on any other part of your body like this. So, stabilization is not working. Yeah, Mike, Mike, Mike just said stabilization software too. There's a lot of plugins for like After Effects you can get um, that will take your video footage and stabilize it, take all the shake and everything out of it. So that's a good tip. Um, Double Up says, didn't Amber Wing just hit something big? Yes, she was the first woman rider to land a heel side, front side 720. And she did that wake to wake as well. Um, that's really big for the ladies. Uh, Pretty, pretty stoked for Amber. Um, what do you think of balls are placing so high at Brostock? I think it's awesome, man. The wake skaters are really good uh, at wakeboarding. Aaron Reed, he always impresses me. Um, at the camp, he would never wakeboard all year, uh, just wake skate all the time, and then jump on a wakeboard one set, and he can do 720s, you know, all the mobs, everything. And I think. I always recommend this to our students at the wakeboard camp. I say, I always tell them, you know, wake skating makes you a better wakeboarder. But unfortunately, it doesn't necessarily go the other way around. It doesn't, wakeboarding doesn't make you better at wake skating. Um, wake skating makes you better at wakeboarding. Um, and I think it's because you have to be so sensitive to the board under your feet. Um, so that kind of hones your sensitivity. So when you get back on your wakeboard, it just feels easier to ride. So someone who wake skates all the time, you know, they're going to have a really good feel for what's going on under their feet. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I think it's really cool that, you know, James Balls are placed, placed cool. high. Um, it just, uh, you know, kind of shows those guys still have skills and they, they, they support both sides of it, not just wake skating. They, they support wakeboarding as well. Uh, let's see. Um, what's the worst injury you've seen wakeboarding? Oh boy, I've seen I've seen some pretty good stuff at the uh, the wakeboard camp. I saw I saw I've seen some pictures on the internet of some pretty bad wakeboard injuries as well. Um, one injury I saw at the camp was um, uh, someone was doing a tantrum and they broke they had a weird uh, weak point in their leg and they broke their leg right out on the growth plate. Um, so that was pretty weird looking. I've also had I don't know if you can see it, but I've had a broken kneecap. That was pretty bad, so that, that's one of them. Um, that took three surgeries to repair, um, so I've had my, my share of injuries. Um, but yeah, um, I've seen some pretty gnarly pictures. Um, how do you keep wakeboarding fresh being all around it all the time? Um, I don't know. Um, if, if, you, uh, if you love something, you know, you, you just... Uh, it always stays fresh. I actually golf a lot. So when I come back to wakeboarding, you know, golf and wakeboarding, they're pretty different. They're both, they're two sides of the spectrum, you know. Golf is pretty mellow, pretty slow. Wakeboarding is a little fast pay, a little faster pace. So I think uh, you could say golf would, you know, give me a little break. And then when I come back to wakeboarding, it stays fresh. Um, in regards to ballast uh, and limitations, um, well, boat well, companies are, um, well, I think, um, I think they're already starting to do that. Like the new Epic boat, um, they have the, the flow in system where, uh, you can just open, uh, some valves and it, you know, pumps in water. So, uh, I think you probably might be able to get away with that on certain lakes because, um, you know, you don't really have, uh, extra weight in your boat and you could probably get rid of it pretty fast, but I'm not sure. Um, that's kind of a tough question. It's kind of, I don't think it gets enforced as much as it probably should be, and I think we're lucky for that. Uh, so let's keep that one on the DL, <laughs> not talk about it too much, or they might start busting us for too much weight in the boats. Um, 
That is a huge monitor in the background. <laughs> Everybody says that when we come into the office. Yeah, that's Mike's, uh, Mike's 30 inch monitor. <laughs> um, when you're when you're editing uh, web pages and video, uh, screen real estate is is pretty important. Um, let's see, are you coming to coach in Europe at all soon? I'm not sure. If someone invites me to come uh, do a clinic, I I'll be over there in a heartbeat. So if you uh, if you guys want to set up a clinic in Europe, you know, just let me know. You can contact me anywhere. Uh, Wake Four Camp, um, Learn Wake, the book, all that stuff. So. Uh, Let's see. It says, um, hey, how about that one time? Oh, let's not talk about that. Um, Mac or PC for video editing? Um, Mike and I use PCs. Um, they tend to be a little bit cheaper uh, and easier to customize. Um, so to enter, to start a small business, it was a little easier easier for us to start with PCs. Um, so I would say we're PC fans, but um, there's nothing wrong with the Mac. Mac and um, and Final Cut Pro. There's a lot of a lot of film video editors that are used to that. Um, it's it's basically all what you're used to. We use Adobe products to do all our editing, um, and we're used to it and we like it. So um, no sense in switching. Uh, who would you like to see on Stoke Meter? Oh man. Well, I would, Danny Harf's one of my favorite wakeboarders, so I would like to see a, a Danny Harf episode. Um, I think he's, you know, the best all-around rider. He's got, he's got everything. So I think that would be a cool episode. Um, another ep a cool episode would be, um, you know, board shapers. You know, m uh, episodes with, uh, you know, people who create the product, uh, designers, engineers, that sort of thing. Um, S tag. Any funny stories? Um, actually, I got a funny office story for you. I knew this was. I knew, <laughs> I knew it was funny. I'm gonna I'm gonna open this door back here. As you as you might be able to see, there's a uh, big stacks of DVDs back there. So um, that's where we keep the book DVDs. Uh, so we can ship them out to the distributors and to people who order them. Well, one day Mike decided to play a little joke on me. So he uh, climbed to the top of the boxes. He hid from me, and then he was calling my name. So I went to go look for him, and I couldn't find him. So finally, I found him, and then Mike couldn't get down. So next thing you know, I go back to my desk, and I, I hear this big crash. My, Mike actually fell from the top of those boxes, which is about probably eight or nine feet up, and uh, hit his head on on the uh, our little small refrigerator in, in the uh, in the room there. It was pretty funny. He actually cracked the refrigerator, and uh, he was laying on the floor. His ear was bleeding. He almost tore his ear off. It was pretty funny. So <laughs> that's a good story. <laughs> That'll teach him to hide from me. Or climb up box stacks of boxes. Oh, there he's going for round two. Um, how do you think wakeboarding, or how do you think we can grow the sport of wakeboarding? Um, I think clinics. Uh, you know, the I used to do trip across America clinics with Liquid Force, and um, the shops, uh, the shops, and the board manufacturers, and everybody, uh, boat manufacturers even. Um, if they do more clinics and uh, do more events, then you know new people are going to get introduced to the sport. I think that's a huge part of it. And uh, so you know the coaches. I think I think one one thing about wakeboarding is uh, the instructors don't get enough credit. There's a lot of instructors out there that are responsible for growing the sport and um, you know teaching people to to wakeboard better. And uh, sometimes I think they get a little bit overlooked. So. It's kind of a shout out to all the instructors that have helped grow the sport for, for many years. Um, how close do you live to the lake? Uh, I actually live on a canal, so um, I could walk out my, uh, my back door about 10 feet and fall into the water. So I live pretty close to the lake. And then all I have to do is go right down my uh, canal um, and underneath the bridge and I'm into Lake Mineola where the wakeboard camp is. So uh, I live about... Um, couple tenths of a mile away from, from the wakeboard camp, so pretty close to the lake. 
Um, how to make the sport bigger in South Carolina? Um, well, like I said, you know, do more clinics. Um, start start a small contest series like INT. Uh, there's still a lot of sport, a lot of states where the INT league is uh, they haven't you know broken into um, a lot of states. So you could start um, like a, a, an amateur series, uh, make it fun, um, and you know that that kind of builds a crowd and. And next thing you know, you know, more people are kind of getting into the sport. Uh, let's see. Uh, what do you think of the image, you know, wakeboarding has? Let's. Okay, that's a good question. Um, I think, I think we're doing really good right now. I think all the sports are feeding off of each other. Um, if you watch surfing, you know, a lot of a lot of surfers are doing uh, frontside airs and grabbing the board indie, and it looks almost exactly like a bat wing on a wakeboard. And I think I think a lot of, you know, a lot of the surfers are getting ideas from wakeboarders and so snowboarders and skateboarders and vice versa. I think we're getting a lot of ideas from snowboarders and I think we've finally gotten to the point where, you know, we we're all helping each other kind of, you know, create and and you know, progress the sports. So, I think we're doing really good right now and I, I really like how wakeboarding looks right now. Um, besides Orlando, where are the hot spots in U.S. for wakeboarding? Well, you know, Southern California, there's always, always a lot of wakeboarding going on. Um, the Northeast, uh, there's a lot of wakeboarding going on up there in in the mountain lakes. Um, um, man, Texas, Oklahoma, uh, I would say I would say Dallas. Dallas is a real hot spot for wakeboarding. Like Texas Ski Ranch, um, all the Dallas lakes. Um, yeah, um, but man, Orlando, nothing beats Orlando. That's probably the biggest spot in the world. Uh, <laughs> Billy asks, is, uh, is Mike looking at pictures of dogs in hats? I don't know, are you, Mike? No. <laughs> Any tips for riders who are trying to progress but only get the chance to ride once every two weeks? <laughs> oh, man, that's a tough one. Um, it's all about water time. So if you're only getting to ride, um, you know, once every two weeks, I, I don't even really know how to answer that one. Um, work on switch, because chances are everything that you're going to want to learn is going to have some sort of switch element. Um, like if you want to learn a heel side, front side 180, you got to be able to edge switch toe side good. You got to be able to take impact switch toe side good. Um, so I mean, the more time you spend switch. You know, the the better you're going to be able to land and ride out of tricks. So, I would say ride switch as much as possible, or at least spend part of your set riding switch. And that's switch toe side and switch heel side. Don't just do switch heel side because that's too easy. Um, what are good exercises to prepare for wakeboarding so uh, you don't get stiff after? Um, every morning um, when the students wake up at the camp, we suggest that they kind of get their blood flowing. Um, a lot of them, we actually, the, the camp location is right on a, a bike trail. So we actually, t you know, try to persuade the campers to take a little jog, um, do a lot of stretching, and drink a lot of water. Um, the bad thing about wakeboarding, and this is probably the worst thing you can do for your muscles, is um, wakeboarding is a workout. So if you ride for 20 to 30 minutes, directly after you sit in the boat and wait for your next ride or wait for your buddies to ride and you know you're just sitting there motionless and your muscles just tighten up and that's probably the worst thing that could happen for your muscles so um, after you get done riding and you're in the boat try to move around a lot try to you know stretch while you're sitting down you can do all kinds of stretches like pull your knees up but try to stay in motion while you're sitting in the boat um, after you ride um, that's probably probably one of the bad things about our sport. You can't, you know, like after you do a really long run, you can walk it out, you can stretch it out. Um, it's hard to do that after you ride in the boat. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's see. Kaysen Lehman. What's up, Kaysen? Uh, what do you think about flex boards? Uh, we, we talked about this a little bit earlier, and I said, you know, there, there's uh, aspects of flex boards that are good for certain things. Um, like you know, park riding, uh, pressing, 
Um, a lot of people think they're la the landings are softer. A lot of people think uh, they get more pop on ollies. Um, so it's all personal preference. But um, I would just say go out and try it, and you know decide for yourself. I think they're great uh, for durability reasons. Um, you can really beat up the sidewalls of a flex board because um, of the ABS or urethane or whatever people are using to uh, to construct them. <coughs> Uh, what line do you recommend? I uh, assume you're talking about uh, wakeboard rope. I like all the straight line stuff. Um, straight line makes uh, really good handles. They have the interchangeable system where you can buy replacement grips, you know, for super cheap, so you don't have to spend, you know, 70 bucks on a whole new handle or 100 bucks on a whole new handle. You can spend 20 on just the grip. Um, I think that's really good. Um, I like their their Spectra Fusion lines are their are my favorite. They're the ones that the classic um, braid, but they have urethane coating on them. Um, a lot, of, you know, a lot of their product is just really good. They're probably my favorite ropes. Um, let's see. Tell us the name of your camp, website, etc. Again, if you would. All right. Uh, it's the Wakeboard Camp in Claremont, Florida. Um, the website for the Wakeboard Camp is wakeboardcamp.com. And then uh, Mike and I have a w an instructional website. Uh, it's all online, subscri uh, subscriber-based instruction. It's called learnwake.com, and um, that's a really cool site. And then we also have uh, uh, thebookdvd.com, where we have instructional DVDs for sale as well. So, um, Malibu Barbie says, "Beat up sidewalls." Uh, the <laughs> Yeah, I guess I probably should elaborate on that a little bit. Um, the new flex boards uh, have a top and bottom sheet, um, and then in between that, they have either ABS plastic or urethane um, or something that makes an actual edge on the board. Um, whereas a normal construction uh, wake board, they take the top and bottom uh, sheet and they pinch them together so there's no sidewall, it's just a parting line. Um, so with the flex construction, you can actually hit the sidewall like against something and it doesn't chip it as easily because you're actually getting hitting ABS plastic so that's pretty cool. Um, Kaysen says I know you work at the camp on Mondays but besides that give us a little rundown of your typical day. Uh, <laughs> um, we talked about this earlier too uh, it's it's basically a lot of instruction um, so I work at the camp in the mornings and then I come to the office and I do uh, updates on LearnWake um, amongst other things uh, at the office. So, uh, pretty much instruction all day. Let's see. Um, when, oh, when will you make a new DVD like the book? Actually, we're getting ready to release LearnWake.com DVDs. So, uh, look for these in shop soon. These are um, our new DVD series. We're going to do volumes. We're releasing two volumes this year. Um, these are all just uh, instructional videos. So check those out in stores pretty soon. Uh, so there's your answer. Maybe it hasn't been announced yet. May, hasn't been announced yet, but maybe next month. Breaking news. So um, seen here first. Uh, let's see. Next question. Um, Bayona says, do you sell instructional videos? Yes. Go to thebookdvd.com. Uh, let's see what else. Looks like a lot of people are talking to each other on here. <laughs> Does anybody have any um, instructional questions for me? Ah, oh, Phil's. I missed this one. Do you train for rails? Yes. We actually take all of our, our students to uh, OWC every Thursday. And uh, OWC is probably one of the best places to learn how to hit rails. OWC is the Orlando Water Sports Complex um, in Orlando. Uh, it's a cable park, and they have a lot of beginner rails that are super safe, um, and you can learn the basics. Um, so we, we do a lot of teaching uh, for rails uh, at the cable park. Um, let's see. How will the DVD, oh, how much will the DVD be? Um, it's it's going to be uh, twenty nine ninety five retail, and it's going to be over an hour's worth of instruction, so pretty good deal. 
Um, how necessary is a bigger wig to progress in your riding? Um, it depends on how far you're, like, uh, kind of what level of riding you're talking about. Um, I had someone learning uh, a 540, Roger. He's been at the camp for the last four weeks, and today he was working on, or yesterday he was working on toe side, front side 540s, and he was doing them wake to wake. What, what I actually did was on a smaller wake, we did him one wake on a longer rope, and uh, he landed his first, uh, you know, toe side, front side five using just one wake landing in the middle. So you don't necessarily need a bigger wake to progress, but um, at some point, you know, it's going to make it easier to land, you know, 720s, um, harder mobs. Um, it's always easier with a bigger wake, but sometimes it can hold you back. So you kind of have to use both. Use a smaller wake, use a longer line, um, use a bigger wake. Uh, you know, it just it depends on the situation, depends on the trick, in my opinion. It's definitely a lot more fun to ride with like an 85 foot rope and a, you know, a boat that's macked out to like 4,000 pounds of ballast, um, like you said, Nate. Um, that's that's a lot of fun, but uh, a big part of wakeboard, I mean, a big part of progressing is being comfortable. So if the wake's too big and it's scaring you, um, you know, if you're if you're a little too high and you don't feel comfortable to, you know, to spin or flip, then you know that's obviously going to hold you back. Um, who are the up-and-coming riders to look for? Oh boy, man, there's a lot. Um, a lot of the junior men's. If you if you pay attention to um, the junior men's series uh, that piggybacks along with the Pro Tour, all those riders are usually the up-and-comers for the Pro Tour. I mean, look at Jimmy LaRich, Adam Arrington, um, all graduates of the junior men's series. Um, Harley Harley Clifford. I mean. Last year he was junior men's. This year he wins his first pro tour stop. That's amazing. Uh, it's kind of you know the junior junior tour is the proving ground for the pro tour. So if you just look at the the standings, um, if you go to prowakeboardtour.com, um, they have the standings for the junior men's. Anybody on that list is potentially going to be one of the you know the next top pro riders. Daniel Powers. Uh, we just actually he's riding for Arnett now. Um, and uh, he is he's ripping he's going to be one of the up and covers he's actually got two more years on a junior tour so uh, watch out for him um, let's see uh, how do you practice rap tricks um, I'm afraid to cut into the weight rats okay, um thanks Mike for the, the print right there <laughs> I'm just messing with you um, rat, um, I mean if I would say you you should start you know, maybe unwrap on the surface uh, just to feel the trick out, uh, feel what the trick's going to feel like uh, before you actually do it in the air, just so you can deal with the tension and the time that you get tension. Um, yeah, that's that's a tough one, but a lot I think a lot of people kind of go too far, too fast. So instead of like say their goal is to land a wrapped heel side backside 360, instead of learning. A heel side back, a wrapped heel side backside 180. They go straight at the three, and they just can't control it. So I think the smartest thing to do is to use the progression ladder, so to speak, and work your way up to your goal trick, um, and maybe even practice the wrap spins on the surface as well at slower speeds. Um, let's see. Um, next question. Uh, crazy wake. Uh, that's a good one. I'm having trouble getting the indie tantrum or indie grab. Um, held long and consistent. Um, yeah, that's a that's a tough grab. Um, one of the one of the biggest mistakes made with an indie tantrum is uh, a lot of, a lot of riders. You know, like like the tantrum when you're flipping, you flip back. So you're actually pulling yourself away from the board. So you're moving your body to flip back away from the board. So what you have to do is you have to get used to not flipping with your upper body at all. So you, when you hit the wake and you pop straight up, you can't flip with your upper body at all. You just got to fold your legs up and then your legs, your knees, your legs, the board, everything's going to kick you over. Um, it, it, it takes a lot of willpower to not flip with your upper body. But I mean, that's probably the biggest key to, to get the grab early and then hold it all the way around. 
Another thing that helps a lot is uh, grabbing more towards the nose of the board. So, um, like if you grab across your body towards the nose of the board, your arm falls in between your legs easier. But it also, you have a tendency to bring your front knee up more um, when you leave the weight for a tantrum. So if you grab across your body, you'll get the grab earlier and then you'll be able to hold it longer. Another thing is um, a lot of people don't practice backside reentry ollie pops enough. Um, and the backside reentry ollie pop is directly related to your tantrum pop. So if you go out and you do a, a backside reentry ollie pop and you can't get very high, that kind of tells you, you know, how your pop for your tantrum is going to be. Um, if you improve that, you'll definitely be able to get a lot higher and uh, be able to hold the grab longer. Um, let's see. Uh, any tips on landing? Um, uh, it says, I know a dumb question. I don't think that's a dumb question. Um, in most other sports, skateboarding, snowboarding, there's no line involved. There's no rope. There's no pull. Um, you have to land and balance over the board. Uh, and I think that crosses over to wakeboarding. Um, but it doesn't work in wakeboarding. You have to land, you can land and coast out of tricks, but it's a lot easier to land against the rope. Um, so the biggest thing is anticipating um, landing on an edge, landing against the rope, and trusting that the rope will catch you if you land against it. Um, while you're in the air, you definitely have a job to do. You don't want to just fly through the air, not do anything, and then try to land. You want to in the air, make the decision to fall back against the rope, edge again right when you hit the water, and land against the rope. That's a, that's a good question. Always anticipate your next edge while you're in the air. Uh, a lot of riders, as soon as they hit the water, they try to stop. And uh, your, your upper body comes forward when you do that, and you have to balance over the board. So there's nothing helping you, nothing to help you be stable. So think about landing back, think about edging. Um, Let's see, Max, do you have a coupon code for Learn Lake to register? <laughs> um, we actually have coupon cards, so if you shoot us an email, um, I don't know, let me ask Mike, what, Mike, what do you think the best way to do that is? Send us an email? Just or announce one, so it'll be, done, it'll be ready 15 minutes after your broadcast. Just create one. Um, let's see. <laughs> let's, uh, let's pick a coupon code. Well, let's call it Stoke Meter. Um, so what we'll do is we'll create, we'll create a coupon code called Stoke Meter. All lowercase. All lowercase letters. Um, 15, 15 minutes after the broadcast. Um, um, actually, Mike's going to start it right now. Um, if you go to our, our homepage, learnwake.com, and click sign up, uh, there'll be, it'll ask you if you have a coupon code or not. Uh, go to the yes part and enter the coupon code, um, Stoke Meter, all lowercase letters, and it'll give you a free uh, a free pass so you can try out the site. It only works for new members. It only works for new members though, so um, it doesn't work for existing members. So yeah, the coupon code is Stoke Meter. Um, let's see, next question. Um, you teach you teach people. Uh, sorry, you like to teach people they might never wake up before. Ah, you never do. Okay. Um. Wow, that's a broad question. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't quite understand the question. Actually, you can do everything. What they have problems with. Do you get tired to train beginners? Oh no no no. Uh, beginner. I actually like coaching beginners the best um, because they don't have any bad habits to break. Uh, so you get you get to create just new habits, uh, right? You know, and just keep going with new habits. Um, it, one of the hardest things to do as a coach is break bad habits. So with beginners, that's just it just doesn't exist. So um, I actually really enjoy teaching beginners. So. Um, when you get up in it, it's actually harder to teach someone who is more technical with their riding because uh, it, it gets into more of the intricate details. Um, all of it's fun for me, but yeah, I mean, beginners are, are nice because you can see them progress, you can see them learn so much in their first set, and you don't have bad habits to break. <coughs> Excuse me. What is the easiest way to get more consistent on blind landings? Um, 
practice riding blind. <laughs> That's uh, a lot of people try to land blind, but they can't ride blind. So I suggest getting in the blind position, going out to the flats, and learning how to carve around. You know, learning how to edge toe side and heel side. Um, that's that's probably the most important thing. You can't if you can't ride blind, you can't land blind. Um, and most people only la learn how to ride toe side blind, which is bent forward. Um, no one learns how to really twist their body awkwardly and do heel side blind. Um, so make sure you learn both both edges, just like you would learn both edges when you're riding in the normal riding position. So um, next question. What mistakes do beginners make the most? Um, body position mistakes. Uh, their body position breaks down. Uh, like when they pop. Um, I mean, it's kind of human instinct to be in a safer position. So when you when you ride through the wake, you have to stand super tall to get you know a lot of air, get your full extension, um, get really good pop, and for to go against your natural instinct to kind of protect yourself and ball up, you know, that's hard for people to kind of break. So um, you, you mentally you have to fight fight the urge to to protect yourself. You gotta stand tall, you gotta keep your position correct because wakeboarding is all about holding the proper position. Um, so yeah, I would say position, bad habits. Break down in position. What about thin size location? Um, Fin size, I molded fins are great. I, I like I like boards with two molded fins on the outside or just two fins on the outside, no bigger than an inch. Um, just because uh, when I teach a lot of riders, I teach a lot of surface drills. Um, the cool thing about having long based fins, whether they're molded or bolt on, is uh, when you're riding flat, you can still break the board loose. Um, but when you roll over onto edge, the board hooks up fine. So I would say, you know, something long based, no bigger than an inch, um, either molded or bolt on fins. Um, if you have that kind of setup, like no middle fin, just side fins, um, both front and back, I think that's the most ideal setup for, uh, for wakeboarding and learning how to wakeboard. Um, let's see. TWC, how do you do a Rayleigh like Daz? <laughs> a nice one. Um, you get Daz to teach you how to do a rally. <laughs> Daz is one of the coaches at the wakeboard camp, if anybody was wondering. Um, I actually haven't seen Daz do a rally, so I'm kind of curious myself. Um, S-Tag, how many people do you estimate you've taught how to get up on a board? Oh man, I don't, I don't know. Probably, um, I don't even know where to begin. Um, it's got to be, it's probably in the you know, in the hundreds somewhere. I wouldn't say it's in the thousands because, you know, you don't you don't really teach super new, you know, people that have never ever wakeboarded before as as frequently as you teach people that have already wakeboarded. So, um, probably probably high hundreds, close to thousands maybe. Coupon codes. Uh, Mike just let me know that the coupon code is working. So if anybody wants to go check out LearnWake.com, you can enter enter Stoke Meter in the coupon section on the sign up page. Um, let's see, next question. What trick do you like teaching the most? Uh, I don't really have a particular trick, really. Um, I like, oh, that's a tough one. I'd have to think about that. Let me, let me stew on that for a little bit and I'll get back to you. Um, can you tell us more about body position? Uh, correct body position. Um, well, it's different for, um, toe side than heel side, um, but since you're getting pulled by a boat, you have to resist a pull. Uh, to do that, you have to have your hips in front of you, in between you and the boat. Um, so if your hips get out behind you, so kind of like this, if your hips go out behind you, now you're falling forward. So you have to get your hips in front of you so you can resist the pull. So if I'm riding like this and I push my hips forward, now I'm in a good position to resist the pull of the boat. If I, my hips get underneath me or behind me, now the boat's going to win the battle and I'm going to get pulled forward. So um, it's mostly about hip position. Um, we teach, or I teach, three different riding positions. Um, I, seated, or edging positions, I should say. Uh, uh, seated, middle, and tall. And those are different kind of uh, degrees of leverage. 
and they're ideal for different types of tricks. So, uh, for instance, a back roll. If you if you want to create leverage, you need a taller position. So, the tall edging position is more ideal for doing a back roll. Um, on the other hand, like uh, a 360, you don't want line tension, so you wouldn't want the tall position. You'd want more leg push and less line tension. So. Uh, the seated edging position would be more ideal, so that way you could come in slower and use a lot more legs to clear the wake. Um, so that's kind of how I teach. Um, if you're combining, say, a back roll with a grab and a spin, then that's when you use the middle position. Um, but yeah, you, we, on, on LearnWake.com we have what's called a, um, a, a cheat sheet. And uh, the cheat sheet gives you uh, the edge type the edging position and then what size approach you should take for every trick basically there is in wakeboarding. So basically those three starting points, if you if you make sure those are right, it'll make the trick function a lot better. So um, it's a good little learning tool. So if you take your goal trick and then just look at that cheat sheet, um, you'll have a lot more success actually executing the trick. So um, says who do you respect in the sport? Oh man, a lot of people. There, I mean, anybody that's helped the sport grow, all the coaches for sure. Um, there's a lot of people that have, you know. Um, one of the biggest movements that I would I would say was was uh, best for the sport was what was called the the new crew back in the day. Um, our sport was kind of headed in the wrong direction. Um, we had wrong terminology, like they were calling you know, tricks, weird names, and edges, weird names, and certain things, and then, um, like Chase Hebner, Thomas Harrell, Matt Staker, Sean Murray, a lot of those guys came together, and um, a lot of riders came together, I should say, and kind of set, set us in line with all, all the other sports. I mean, we have to respect our roots, and our roots are surfing, skateboarding, you know, everybody before us, so that crew helped us, you know, name tricks properly and and kind of, you know, head, keep our keep our sport heading in the right direction and I think that's why we get the respect we do from the other sports now. So, um, <coughs> all, all the guys that kind of helped the sport go in the right direction. Um, mm -hmm. all the a lot of the legends are responsible for that. So that's cool. Um, let's see. Are you uh, going to do more shows? Uh, well, if they invite me back, I'll do more shows for sure. Um, so, yeah, stay posted. Um, that's a question for uh, the staff at stokemeter.com. <laughs> See you. Any driving tips for pulling wakeboarders? Oh, man. Um, I think one of the biggest misconceptions is uh, how hard you need to pull somebody up on a wakeboard. I hear so many people um, that come to the camp say, you know, especially women, my boyfriend pulls me up out of the water too fast. Um, it takes about five miles per hour to pull someone out of the water if they're in the right position, if they do it right. You don't have to gas it, you don't have to floor it, and, and you, don't have to do, you don't have to learn tricks at normal wakeboard speeds. Um, we, we teach so much at you know, 17, in between 17 and 14 miles per hour. See you, Mike. Um, so you just don't have to go fast. So keep it slow. Use the graduation ladder, you know, like ollie or surface, ollie, inside out, one wake, two wake. You know, use, use that graduation ladder. It's the quickest way to progress. Um, what was your first wakeboard? I actually had a Hyperlite bath. Um, I won't say what it stands for. Uh, but yeah, it was a, a really early twin tip. Had really skinny nose and tail, um, a wider middle section. But um, yeah, Hyperlite Bath was my first board. The first board I ever rode, um, it wasn't my board, but it was my buddy uh, Zach True back in in high school. Was a uh, O'Brien Apex. It was a directional board, kind of looked like a surfboard. Had sandal straps. Um, yeah, it was old school. Um, let's see. Uh, how many members do you have on LearnWake? We have a lot. We have over, I think we have over a thousand, um, thousand members, um, and I think it's uh, almost 500 active subscriptions. So, um, and a membership is 9.99 a month, 
it's like 10 bucks a month um, for professional instruction. You can't beat that, especially when you know a professional coach like actually costs almost a hundred dollars a set. Um, you spend 10 bucks a month, and you can have access to me whenever you want. So that's a pretty good deal. Or you can spend 99, uh, 99 or 100 bucks a year and that saves you 20 bucks so uh, it's a pretty good deal you can the coolest feature on our site is you guys can upload videos um, uh, or you can use YouTube and you can post the embed codes in our bulletin section and I'll analyze your videos for you and tell you what what you're doing wrong so that's probably one of the coolest coolest uh, features on our site amongst all the other stuff we have chat rooms on there as well um, let's see is there any hope that I'll become a better wakeboarder? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, you just, you know, you just gotta get some coaching. Uh, come to the wakeboard camp. You know, let us let us uh, let us teach you. Um, <laughs> that's kind of a weird question. Definitely, if you if you spend time on the water, if you ride switch, you'll definitely become a better rider. Uh, what is your favorite wakeboard video videographer? Um, one of my favorites is. Pre-pop. Uh, Chase Hebner did an uh, amazing job on that video. Um, any of the, the old videos by uh, Bump Films, um, like uh, the Shaft videos, uh, those were great. I loved watching uh, Parks and all the Bump Film videos. Uh, that was that was awesome. Um, man, there's a lot of old videos. Uh, one of my favorite sections was in uh, Scurfs Up with uh, Scott Byerly and uh, Greg Nelson. Um, it was at the end of the video. That was a really good video. And then one of my favorite uh, intros was the um, Hit It, uh, the Greg Nelson Double Up, Indie Tantrum Double Up. That was awesome. Um, let's see. Are you ever going to get behind my lens again? Maybe. Uh, I guess. If you, uh, if you come shoot me. <laughs> let's see. What do you see, uh, Tina? What do you see the difference, or what do you see the differences between East and West Coast wakeboarding? Um, I think it's kind of blending now. Um, there used to be a pretty distinct difference. I think a lot of riders uh, um, out in the West Coast were focused more on spinning, um, but I think it's I think it's uh, kind of mixing now. Um, out here, we were kind of pushing the limits of flips for a long time, but now we're spinning. Um, so I think everybody's everybody's kind of doing the same thing. Is I don't I don't necessarily think there's uh, as big of a difference as there used to be, or a difference at all. Um, Lyman and Greenwood are available for hire uh, through Stoke, Stoke Meter as well. Nice. Um, yeah, I knew I knew it was you, Steve. I was just I was just uh, <laughs> I didn't know how to answer the question. <laughs> um, let's see. I hope you're doing well too. This is my first video chat, and I gotta say, it's weird not getting verbal feedback. So I'm still adjusting to this a little bit. Um, Nate, will you be at the OK Nationals this weekend? Nope, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be there this year. I thought I was gonna set up some clinics, um, but it didn't happen, so. I'll be in Florida for the Nationals. I will be at Worlds, though. Um, what do you think the limit is for spins? Oh, man, it's going to be hard to, to do anything past the 1260 with the size of the wakes. Um, that's going to kind of depend on the uh, boat manufacturers, I think. If they can design a bigger wake, um, bigger, wider, anything that's going to give riders more time in the air. Um, but uh, it's also going to depend a little bit on um, the riders. I mean, they're going to have to work hard to beat a 1260. I mean, Danny Harf landed the 1260, and that's going to—it's going to be hard to top that. Uh, where in the world is your favorite spot to wakeboard? Um, I'm going to have to say home sweet home, Claremont, Florida. I mean, our lakes, our lakes are sweet. Um, I've seen some pretty cool things though. Um, Lake Powell is really cool. Uh, Went to Spain a couple times. That's pretty cool, Czechoslovakia. Um, but man, you always—I always seem to click my heels when I'm 
when I'm out, you know, doing clinics because our, our home lake is just awesome. I love, I love Claremont. Um, let's see. Han, what's going on with UGP? Um, uh, they're still up and going, man. Uh, everything's good. Uh, just, you know, trucking along. The economy is definitely not, you know, helping situation, but uh, they're still pushing forward, um, still going full bore. And uh, I think in the future, you're going to see a lot more in the wakeboard industry. Uh, there, you know, we at Expo last year, we were trying to get the, the vest line going. And um, uh, unfortunately, the economy didn't didn't help that much, but you know that's still in the works. So um, we're just gonna keep still pushing forward. They're doing good. Mike actually just redid the UGP website, um, and it looks amazing. You should check it out. Uh, Case and just put up the link undergroundproducts.com. So, um, Phils, what do you think about cable and winching? Um, I think it's awesome. I, I always love to see. Um, shots of, you know, like more urban style stuff, uh, like um, retention pond stuff in the middle of a city, or handrail stuff um, with uh, just a little pool at the bottom and the top. Um, one thing that kind of comes to mind is that one shot that, um, uh, who was it? Uh, man, I'm having a brain fart. I can't remember who it was. Uh, it'll come back to me, but it was a shot at um, a high school, and it was a straight-on shot, and it was a big handrail, a pool at the top and a pool at the bottom, and I, th I think stuff like that looks so cool and is really good to, to help our sport grow. Um, any any kind of, you know, water fountain stuff, and I think, I think all that, uh, like when they go out and poach water fountains um, in front of civic centers and stuff like that, I think that's really cool. Not necessarily smart, but... Um, I think it, it looks really cool in photos and it's really good for our sport. It kind of shows our diversity. Um, Squid says, give us a little insight on the new, on your new board company. Humanoid wake boards. Um, you know, we're just going to try to do things different. Um, it's, it's the flex technology or effect flex construction, but um, uh, Joel and I have some really cool ideas and, uh, you know, we're going to try to just kind of you know turn some heads and and come out with some really cool cool product. Um, it's going to be a slow ro road, you know, building the building the brand and building um, the company. But you know we're up for the challenge. So um, right now we're starting with just wakeboards. Hopefully uh, next year we'll have a binding line, and then you know we'll just keep growing from there. But um, I've I've got a whole plate full of ideas, and and now I finally have um, a company that is willing to. Uh, you know, put those ideas into the works. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, you can check it all out at humanoidwake.com if you're, if you're more interested. So, um, let's see, Brenda, thanks for the amazing coaching. You're welcome. Um, Tina, thanks for stopping by, Tina. Thanks for coming to the show. Um, looks like we're kind of winding down. Up, oh, Nate. How long is your average set? Uh, mine personally, uh, man, I could ride for a good hour and uh, and be fine. Um, average set at the wakeboard camp is 20 to 30 minutes. Um, man, I remember days when you used to go out there and take like over an hour set, you know, close to an hour and a half. Um, but you know, you try to keep your sets under, you know, under 40 minutes. Like 30 minute set is a really long set. And uh, the people in the boat are probably getting frustrated because you're out there saying one more too many times. So, um, Cards, how do you keep so many companies going at once? That's amazing. Hey, man, I got a beautiful wife and two beautiful kids at home. Got to pay the bills. So uh, that's my motivation. So uh, keeps me going, and, um, you know, I enjoy it. So. Uh, how many hours do you sleep per night? I actually get good sleep. I, I get, you know, my eight hours. So eight hours is all you need, right? Sometimes I get ten. I pass out in my recliner. And uh, there you have it. i um, been shouting on the West Coast with weather all in Haiti. Nice. Oh, been shooting. Sorry. I guess you were talking to somebody else. <laughs> oh, okay. Now you're talking. I'm confused. 
Come out and ride. Got to run. Good seeing you. Yeah, good seeing you, Steve. It's been a long time. All right, looks like we're winding down uh, for this episode of Stoke Meter. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming in and uh, checking out the show. Hopefully, I'll get to do it again sometime. Signing out from uh, the offices of LearnWake.com. Thanks, everybody.